Vic Sage is headed down the rabbit hole and he might not like what he sees on the other side. All this and more in the pages of The Question, The Death of Vic Sage, issue number one. Let's hop on in together to this brand new DC Black Label title and find out what happens next, shall we? So I get the strong suspicion that a lot of people first found out about The Question from the Justice League Unlimited cartoon show. Great series with a wonderful take on The Question. There he was a conspiracy nut, kind of in the vein of Agent Mulder from X-Files. A lot of his eccentricities in that show were played for laughs, that of course being a day and age when we considered conspiracy nuts to be harmless and funny. This new miniseries from Jeff Lemire though takes the question all the way back to his Steve Ditko hardcore objectivist roots. You see, according to the question, you're either 100% good or 100% bad and there are no shades of grey in between, and this is illustrated when he breaks up a brothel trafficking in underage girls. The question brutalizes the gangsters and also get some very juicy blackmail information on a corrupt city councilman that was patronizing the brothel. And that's where most heroes would stop, but the question is an anti-hero, and as such he turns around and reads all the poor trafficked women the riot act as well, treating them like they were criminals and not victims. Now back in the original stories, Vic Sage, the question's alter ego, was a crusading journalist, not unlike Lois Lane or Clark Kent. Here he's a journalist too, but they've updated the reference. Now he's more of a 2020 meets Larry King type of talking news head, and tonight he's got probably the biggest guest ever. Hub City's alderman, Myra, who also just so happens to be the sister of the current corrupt mayor. It seems that Sage and Myra had actually been friends in the past, but now Vic is holding her feet to the fire over continuing continuing to turn a blind eye to her brother's corruption and who keeps him in power well corrupt city councilmen like the one that the question videotaped at the brothel vic ambushes myra with the video on his show because again just because he's a hero doesn't mean he's a particularly nice guy myra attempts to defend herself later saying that she is actually one of the good guys and she's trying to change how things work in hub city from the inside and that by hanging her out to dry on television and in the court of public opinion is isn't going to help Vic's crusade anymore. It's here we also meet Myra and the mayor's corrupt lawyer, who has himself a rather interesting signet ring, one that the corrupt councilman was also wearing, one that the question seems to recognize. Almost as if he's seen it before, but that's impossible, right? This question eats away at Vic's mind until eventually he's forced to confide into his old chemistry professor, aka the one who helped him make the mask. The professor says that he always liked Vic, that he was a bright boy, but that he was prone to getting hung up on questions that would lead to obsession, and well, obsession is never good. Of course, though, Vic won't be dissuaged, especially now that he has a true mystery, a true question that needs to be answered, but this just isn't a question, this is a whole conspiracy, one that's gonna need a lot of string for the board. You see, that ring, as we discover, is actually the symbol of an ancient messianic-style group that popped up in Hub City around the time of its founding, an elder society, if you will. Basically, a bunch of creepy old dudes who dressed up in robes, had ceremonies, and oh my god, we're doing true detective right now, aren't we? I mean, I guess it should make a lot of sense. The question is basically the truest detective there is. And just like the true detective formula helped relaunch a bunch of great character actors' career, I get the feeling that Jeff Lemire is hoping to do the same with the question as a character in this book. Now, it's at this point right here, several things all happen at once. Myra goes to confront her brother, only to see that him and his cohorts are actually attempting to murder the councilman who shamed them. A cop guns down two unarmed and innocent passers-by while Vic Sage himself traces the group back to a warehouse, complete with their very own creepy secret basement, because, you know, nothing bad ever happens in a creepy secret basement. The question can't help but shake the feeling that he's been in this place before at some point, and it's around here too, a bunch of strange corpses start to reach out to him and even call him by name. These scenes get so trippy you have to stop and wonder as the reader of Vic Sage can really truly be believed as a reliable narrator at this point. He does walk away with one whopper piece of evidence though, and that is, well, a mask that looks like one of his, but that's impossible, only he and the professor should be able to recreate it, but this one seems old. Wherever Vic was, 
because, too, he ended up losing time, the professor calls him and says that he basically lost three hours wherever he was, and in that time, the city has exploded into a riot. Racial tensions are at an all-time high in the city, and naturally, the corrupt mayor is totally standing by the cop who shot those people. So, basically, we got a cult, we got a conspiracy, we got a race war. What are we missing here? Oh, I know. How about some kung fu? No, that's not a joke, actually. Vic Sage figures that for whatever is coming, he's going to need to be stronger. So he opts to look up his old martial arts sensei, Richard Dragon, who is an actual real character from DC lore who headlined a bunch of kung fu books back in the day and who really hasn't been used that much, so it's fun to see a version of him here. The question shows Richard Dragon the mask, talks about all his fears and how he's wondering if he can even trust his own memories right now. Luckily, Richard Dragon is basically a kung fu Jedi master and says that to solve this mystery, he's going to have to take an inner journey of kinds. Basically, Richard Dragon uses his special kung fu magic inner chakra eye-opening techniques to essentially send Vic Sage back in time to the Wild West. Where when he wakes up, he is seemingly the question all over again. But how is that possible, you might be wondering. Well, I guess we're going to have to pick up issue two to find out, won't we? And so that was the question, the death of Vic Sage issue number one. And boy alive, was this a meaty comic with a lot to dig your teeth into. Jeff Lemire certainly did his homework and pays homage to a lot of different aspects of Vic Sage's character as the question, while also being sure to keep him as 100% an anti-hero, who is occasionally gonna say and do things that you're probably not gonna like, but after a fact, that is what makes the character so fascinating. Cowan's works wonder on art, too. Everything is dark and very foreboding and very atmospheric, perfectly suited for this neo-noir question story. And this is a black label book, too, which means they're a lot freer to push the envelope in a few places, but it never feels gratuitous or over-the-top like some of these other black label books end up feeling. There's a nice level of restraint here. Overall, I'd give this an 8.5 out of 10. Good stuff, and I get the feeling it's going to please a lot of Question fans who have been hungry for a new miniseries for a long time. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Joel, again. Just wanted to take a moment to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, and if you're in the market for comic books right now, and I mean, really, who isn't, you might want to check out my book depository link down in the description. It's no joke my favorite place to buy comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link, not only will you be getting yourself something nice, but you'll be helping helping out the channel a little bit while you do so. So, you win, I win, everybody wins, right? And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Bye-bye.